just for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help. tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make all my troubles quickly and end. I must tell Jesus song got me through those months Amen. of trouble at my house, so thankful. Amen. That's good. Amen. Sometimes you get to the point where you must tell Jesus, right? It's too much. You can't handle it. Drive you crazy. You're carrying it around in your head and your mind, and it's, I got to tell, tell somebody, and you know that just telling somebody else, a human being, it's not going to carry the load uh, that, you, that you really need, so praise the Lord. Um, you can remain seated. Let's uh, turn to Romans in chapter 8. Romans in chapter 8. Romans in chapter 8. Romans in chapter 8. Let me just uh, pick up uh, 724, so chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, and then what leads right in through chapter 8. Remember, the chapter divisions were not, they were not originally in the, uh, you know, the original text. They came afterwards. Um, and um, so um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a logical flow that we don't want to disconnect all the time because of chapter or even verse divisions, okay? So uh, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 7, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he thanks God in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the, uh, the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And verse, chapter 8 and verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. But the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Let's pray. Father, we come to you humbly, Lord. At, uh, it's teaching time. It's preaching time. And God, I pray that you would uh, open up our hearts and minds to receive this great truth um, about uh, to be carnally minded and being spiritually minded. And, uh, oh, God, make your, make your truths known to us. Open uh, thou mine eyes that I may behold wonderful things out of thy law. We love you and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, did anyone did not get a handout? Raise your hand up if you didn't get a handout. Um, so I just wanted to, um, uh, we started uh, uh, Roman numeral one, the new law, and then the uh, letter A is what we dealt with last week. So uh, let me just finish up with B and C by way of uh, review and then go on uh, to uh, the next portion of scripture. So as we're, as you know, in Romans 6, 7, and 8, we are dealing with deliverance from sin, from the power of sin, from the presence of sin in our life. And uh, God has laid it out. There's uh, teaching on it. There's explanation uh, on how and what we need to think about and have information in our hearts and minds. But then there's some things that we need to do also, not just, you know, believe on these things. That, that's part of it. Learn this and believe it, but also do something about it. And uh, so we've gone over some things, um, and certainly in, uh, as we go from chapter 7 to chapter 8, uh, we see that we are dealing with uh, the experience of the Christian life and, and the, the, the freedom and the victory in Christ that he provides. Uh, and this is sort of uh, catapulted, if you would, from that experience in verse 24 where he's crying out, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And that is the reality of indwelling sin in our bodies. And even though we want to do good, sin is present with me. It's in my body. And I, I, I want to resist, but I still have uh, this desire to do wrong. But, but I, I enjoy the things of God, but I also enjoy the other things too of the flesh. And, and, this, and you get pulled in different directions and it drives you crazy sometimes. Amen. Am I the only one that experiences that? Me and Paul? Am I the only one in the room? Amen. <clears throat> Paul and I, excuse me, Miss Patty. The, we're in the presence of a grammarian, okay? And um, so, and then, uh, so this idea, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, that is the essence of what we're dealing with, is being delivered. See, because here's the thing when we get to that idea of carnal, there are carnal. Christians, that means you're saved, you're born again, and, uh, but you're living after your, and I'll get into this in a minute, I just want to start out with you and that you understand these designations. You have a lost person, and then you have a saved person. And you have a saved person that might be surrendered to Christ, abiding in Christ, Christ the Holy Spirit is controlling you, right? You're, you're boy, you're, you're delivered, Amen. But there's also folks that are saved, but they're sort of still minding the things of the flesh. That word flesh means to be is carnal or carnally minded. And so with that struggle of being saved but carnal, there is this cry that, that Paul uh, t testifies about. Is to cr the cry is to be delivered. And it's delivered from a lot of things, but it's from yourself. Amen? That delivered from your flesh means delivered from the power of sin that's residing in my own body. So that's the scenario that we deal with a lost person and then a saved person. And that saved person can be surrendered or that saved person can be carnal and uh, minding the things of the flesh. So as we get through chapter 8, 
uh, we see, uh, and remember I, I mentioned in the opening paragraph of part two, the way of deliverance experienced. We had the way of deliverance explained in chapter six and seven, but now it's experienced. Now, now we're getting to some things here, okay? So the way of freedom um, is lived out as an experiential thing. This is not just information. You go to class and you learn a bunch of stuff and you take a test and you're delivered of your sin. Okay? It's not like that. Right? This is something that's uh, being a disciple of Christ is not just going to school and learning information. It's being transformed. Right? It's about transformation, not just information. Amen? So we need the information to be transformed, but there is this experience that has to take place. And you have to get to that point that, that he got in, in dealing with your own, to be wretched is to be, is to be uh, 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 at the lowest point, is to be sad, to be uh, uh, frustrated and miserable. Amen? Uh, I remember uh, Pastor Cardano used to say, uh, you know, um, the, the truth, uh, it'll set you free, but first it'll make you miserable. Right? The truth will set you free, right? But first, it'll make you miserable. And you got to get miserable to understand the reality of the situation you're in. To be able to say, okay, I'm going to experience deliverance, and here we go. And uh, he answers, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he says this, this law. He goes, he understands, with my mind I serve the law of God, with the flesh the law of sin. Now, this new law in chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, first of all, we see there's no more condemnation for sin. And, and again, remember I, I, I mentioned last week that this is not just condemnation for the penalty of sin, meaning uh, being saved or justified or, or uh, going to, uh, we're, we're not saved. He's not just dealing with salvation here, okay? He's dealing with the results of abiding sin in your life and doing wrong even as a saved person. I mentioned last week the position possessed is you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're saved. If you're in Adam, you're lost. And that's it. That's how humanity is divided, okay? And um, so we are saved from the condemnation of the penalty of sin. Well, certainly. We don't have to stand before God and, and face the consequence of our sin. But also... Uh, we get delivered and we experience the deliverance of self-condemnation. That means when I do wrong, I castigate myself. I get frustrated with myself. I get angry with myself. And we condemn ourselves in our own minds, in our own hearts. And, um, and uh, so that's that wretchedness that he's talking about. It's, the, it's being delivered from that wretchedness. There, there's deliverance from the power of sin, but then there's the, what the outcome of uh, yielding to that sin is self-misery, self-loathing. That old slough of despond, as old John Bunyan explained in Pilgrim's Progress. Self-condemnation. Miserable, just just whipping yourself in your own mind. Ah, oh, looking at the mirror and going, what a loser. That's a tough place to be, amen? There's a lot of that, by the way, uh, that uh, uh, motivates uh, some aspects of mental illness. And, um, but it's, but this idea, notice it says, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, um, so we are free, so there's, not, there's no more condemnation for sin, not just the penalty of it, but the consequences of yielding to it as a saved person. All right, does that make sense what I'm trying to say tonight? And then there's no more control by sin. This is new material here in verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So this new law, there's a new law and there's a new Lord. And then there's a new life in the, through this chapter. That's how this chapter is divided into three different parts. But this new law, man, this new law is, is here's the new law. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ. 
which hath made me free from the law of sin and death. This is exciting stuff. Because you know that old verse, he, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? This is another explanation of that same concept. You know, I have the illustration here is a, you know, picture this thing falling down, right? That's, that's falling according to the laws of gravity, right? But if I go like this and push it upward, uh, my force that I'm bringing to this, to this uh, inanimate object, my force is greater than the law of gravity that's pulling it down. I have a stronger force in lifting it up. And just like that, because of sin in my physical body, it is, it is like gravity pulling me down the law of sin and death. And again, that death is not just uh, what we would understand. It's about physical death, certainly. I mean, remember, uh, what about uh, taking the Lord's Supper? And we read through 1 Corinthians 11, and what does it say there? You know, some that are sick and some what? Some sleep. Now, that's not just, you know, the Corinthian church, after they had all their food, they went back and took a nap in the back pew, okay? That wasn't what was going on there. That word sleep is talking about Christians who die. And the idea of sleep is that they're going to be resurrected under the, you know, the, res uh, you know, the resurrection unto life in the presence of God. Now, watch. So... So, and again, not to go through in 1 Corinthians 11 verse by verse, but you remember uh, the warnings of to take the Lord's Supper, um, uh, what's the word, Un, what is it? Unworthily, thank you. Uh, unworthily, to take it unworthily uh, as a believer, that's a Christian person taking it unworthily. You've got unrepentant sin in your life and you don't do it, you don't care, you don't have an attitude about it, and you take that anyway. Well, the, the Bible says that there, there's some people that have been sick as a result of that and they get physically ill. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not diagnosing anybody. I'm just telling you what Paul said and what God told him to say. But then he said there are some that die. They sleep. There are some that have even died. Remember, he prayed to have uh, that one gentleman, we surrendered him over, we gave him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Remember that guy? Paul was saying, can you imagine? Paul was giving up on somebody that was one of his crew that traveled with him and preached and witnessed and started churches and had evangelistic revival meetings. And because they got so far out, out, out of whack, they got so against them, they got so anti-God, he said, look, I can't, I can't, I can't control this guy. We challenged him. We went one-on-one. -on -one. We took him. We took two to one. We, we took him to the church, right? The discipline that Jesus laid out in Matthew 18. And we did all those things, and he still wouldn't repent. He said, okay. We gave him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You know what that means? He either gets right or he goes off to glory. To destroy the flesh. Now watch. So when it says the law of sin and death for a saved person, right? remember there's therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. We're talking about people that are in Christ Jesus. So how are people that are in Christ Jesus and they're experiencing the law of sin and death? Well, because we're still in this earth suit that has sin abiding in it physically, in our physical body. It's a fallen earth suit that we're living in and um, so once if I sin there's a death of opportunity right there's a death of my relationships you go off and commit adultery the Bible says even Jesus said that's grounds for divorce so that's a law that's the activity of the law of sin and death in the life of a saved person can saved people commit adultery oh sure of course. Can saved person uh, go get drunk and drive a car into a, into a tree and kill themselves? Oh, yeah. The law of sin and death is a law that, in a principle that can work in the life of a believer, a carnal believer, but a believer nevertheless. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? This old flesh, the sin that abides inside my, man, if I, if I hearken to it, 
That law of sin and death, will, will, it, it, it's a part of death. It'll destroy my relationships. It'll destroy my self-confidence, my self-concept. It'll destroy my, my peace of mind and my heart. It'll destroy my love for the Lord. My, it'll destroy my confidence coming to church. It'll destroy my, my praise and my worship. It'll destroy my, my tithes and my blessings thereof. It'll destroy my witness. People aren't going out soul winning if they're like miserable and wretched and, and you know, all tore up and, and all the consequences of their sin. You know, I, I, I made this statement. I know uh, it is a family member of mine. And, uh, and I know he's in some legal issues, and he's got this issue, he's got that issue. And, and, and it breaks my heart. They're saved. I believe they're saved, but I believe they're, they're abiding and caught up in this, this little hamster wheel of the law of sin and death. Amen. And, um, and what it is is they're fighting battles that they shouldn't have to fight. It's like pray for this, pray for this result to, to occur. Well, you know, amen, I'll pray for you. But it's sad that we're even having to pray for that. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? There's a death there. The death of all these things. Now, here's the deal. There's a new law, friends. There's like a new sheriff in town. We don't have to do that. We don't have to sin. Why? Verse 2. For the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, that, that's pretty powerful. You know, the word law, Miss Jenny, is a pretty powerful word. It doesn't say theory. It doesn't say idea. It doesn't say, well, possible motivational principle. It says law. That means it can be reproduced every and any time in a laboratory. It's a law. It's certain. It is, it is exact every time. So what does that mean? The law of the spirit of life in Christ. As a saved person, I have the spirit of God inside of me. The moment I got saved, I was regenerated. I was regened. You ever see those, uh, those double helix DNA molecules? You know how they kind of, they're like ladders that spiral like that, the DNA, right? And... Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like a, 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 a digital recreation of an operation and how they'll, they'll, they'll see things split apart and then they bring other things in. And they'll bring RNA and DNA and they'll, they can change it. It's literally like half of our DNA has been separated and we got the Jesus half plugging in. Amen. We're regene. We're regenerated. And the life of the new nature in Christ is permanently affixed and creates our new identity, right? We're saved. I mentioned last week the, uh, um, over there in 1 John, it says you can't sin in the spirit. If you're abiding in Christ and you're operating according to this law, the spirit of life in Christ, 1 John says you're that, the, 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 you, won't, you won't sin, right? Now watch, stay with me. The law of the spirit of life in Christ is stronger than the law of sin and death. You, it isn't just you and your mind creating willpower to overcome the law of sin and death in your body. Because it isn't the law of a positive thinking. This isn't Norman Vincent Peale. This is Paul the Apostle. Amen. I'm not against those guys. They've got some good stuff, I'm sure. Think and grow rich. Napoleon Hill. A lot of good stuff in there. I'm, I'm not minimizing it. But it isn't a law of positive thinking. It is the law of the spirit of life in Christ. As a saved person, uni our spirit's unified with Christ. The spirit of God is dwelling inside of me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit is abiding inside of me. So that power of the Spirit is inside of me, and it's stronger than the law of sin and death in my physical body. Does that make sense, what I'm trying to say? So there's no more, you know, you are no longer controlled by sin. Notice it says, you are made free. I mean, it's like you were a, uh, it's like you were a marionette, right? 
And there's some of you know the, 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 the puppet masters up there, and you got all strings, and you're you're going around like this, and you're you're a marionette. Amen. I think you need Dick Van Dyke to illustrate that, Daryl, you know. <laughs> and um, but you know what? It's like it's like once you get saved, Jesus comes along and just snips all the strings. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ inside of you is, 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 is stronger than that. Now, you might look up for that hand and want to kind of reattach them. And, but I kind of like going like this. Can you like, you know, you might do that. That's a carnal Christian being saved and set free, but still wanting to sort of abide in the, in the, uh, the flesh and the principles there. But you don't have to. You're not controlled by it. Does that make sense? You're set free. The law of the spirit of Christ, life in Christ, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now look at verse 3. So there's no more condemnation for sin. You don't have to sin and be miserable about it as a Christian. There's no more control by sin. It's not, it's, it's not a doomed destiny of, of uh, discouragement and depression by uh, giving in to the, to the uh, desires of your flesh and, and, uh, and sinful flesh. You don't have to do that. You're not under control of it anymore. And then there's no more continuance of it. Look at verse 3 and 4. It says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Okay, so what, what, could the, what, what, what could the law not do? Let me ask you that. What could the law, what is he referring to? The law, what the law could not do. You know what the law couldn't do? We dealt all this with chapter 7. The law can't make you righteous. The law can't invigorate you and fight against sin inside your body. Matter of fact, when you go to verse chapter 7, it says it makes it worse. Remember, it revives sin inside of me by trying to obey the law. Now, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Remember that? So what the law could not do is make me righteous, sanctify me. The law can't sanctify me because I have to first be delivered. I got to be saved and then I got to be delivered. The law can't make me perfect. The law can't make me righteous. Why? Because of the flesh. It's too weak. Because of the weakness of my flesh, I can't abide. I can't be perfect all the time. I can't be righteous in my own my own because my body has sin in it. Now watch. But here's his solution. Again, the solution in verse 3, God sent his own son in likeness of sinful flesh. Remember, the incarnation God, like what we celebrate around Christmas time, right? So God uh, came and uh, 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 Mary uh, gave birth to the no human father, gave birth to the, through the, the Holy Spirit and uh, to uh, Jesus, who was a perfect, fully human, sinless human, but sinless in the likeness of sinful flesh, the like he wasn't sin, the, he wasn't sin, he wasn't sinful, but it was in the likeness of sinful flesh, the, of human, of human physical, uh, the human physical body. Now watch, and then in that physical body, as I mentioned this morning on the cross, he took all the the penalty of sin in that physical body. He endured the physical pain in all of the punishment in that physical body. And when he died, what he did is he condemned sin in the flesh. While he was a physical human being, he condemned sin. Because he absorbed the reality of it when he died and was buried and rose again in a glorified body. Now watch. It's a continuation, verse 3 or verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So actually, it is a matter of that now that we're saved, now we 
can actually fulfill the righteousness of the law. Because we're not doing it just as a result of our human will. And that sin principle rises up. You know, I want to do good, but sin is with me. And I want to do right. Uh, the Bible says, don't covet your neighbor. I'm not going to covet, but then I want to covet. And the Bible over here says, honor your parents. I want to honor my parents, but they're not perfect. And they get jerky sometimes. <laughs> you know, so I want to do right, but then it rises up. And I want to do right, and then it rises up. I don't want to do wrong, but then it rises up. But so that's how the, the law alone makes is too weak for me to become righteous. So but now that Jesus died, bore that sin in himself and the penalty of it and condemned sin in the flesh, rose again. And then he ascended up into heaven and he said, I'm going to send you another comforter who shall be in you, the spirit of Christ. And when the spirit of Christ now resides and abides within us as a New Testament believer, now that that spirit inside of us. Now, if I'm abiding in Christ, I can obey the law and I can fulfill the righteousness that the law is intended to do. Does that make sense? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, so for time's sake, let me just, let me just make this, identify. I'm going to identify something here real quick and then we'll be done tonight. So there's the new, I'm just going to introduce the next part and we'll be done. So we have the new law. So there's a new law. It's the, new, it's the law of the life of the, the law of the, of the, the, I'm getting confused. The law of the, say life of the spirit, the spirit of life in Christ, right? That's a new law that's inside of me. That's stronger than the law of sin and death. That's also in, in, in my physical body. Now watch. But look, notice it says... Who walk not after the, there's a little condition there. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now we get into the new Lord. There's a new law, but now there's a new Lord. And that new Lord is it's God in, in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So now God is inside of me. The Lord God of heaven and earth that created the earth in seven days resides inside of me. And it's a mystery, okay? I don't understand all this stuff. But it's a mystery. There's a mystery of godliness. There's a, many different mysteries throughout the New Testament. I think the word mystery actually occurs 27 times in the New Testament. It refers to several different things. But notice it says that they are at, at, that to mind the things of the flesh. But there's a difference. Hear me out and I'll be done. Listen to me. So there's things between, between walking after the flesh and being in the flesh. Walking after the spirit or being in the spirit. Because if you're in the flesh, that means you're lost. Okay, now let's look at it for, for a second. Okay, look, look at verse five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We're still, we're still talking about a saved person here. And what they're doing is they're thinking after the flesh. They're going after, they're thinking after, they're longing after, they're acting after. Are you with me? They're grasping after the flesh, fleshly things. You with me? Saved person, carnal. They're, and they, uh, but they that are after the spirit, they're, they're grasping after the things of the spirit. They're minding. They're thinking about it. They're uh, meditating upon it. They're making plans. They're acting on it. The things of the spirit. That's a saved person. We could do either one, right? Now watch. Look at verse 6. And this is just a continuation. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right? Now watch. Look at verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. We're still talking about a saved person who's carnal. Okay? But now watch. I just want to, I'm just going to clarify this designation, and then we'll be done. No, but look at verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Ding, 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 ding. Now it's changed. The preposition is changed. After the flesh to in the flesh. Now watch. But ye are not in the flesh. But wait a minute. I thought he was just saying you that are saved, you're minding the things of the flesh. But yeah, he's saying you saved person. You can mind the things of the flesh, be carnally minded. But he's like, but he's saying, but wait a minute, wait a minute. He's changing gears here. And he's saying, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So that word in the flesh means lost. You are lost. 
You have not been, um, um, you have not been uh, uh, saved and that outer shell, if you would, of your flesh has been cracked open and the spirit of God is residing inside of you, so to speak. No, you're in the flesh. You are bound to the flesh. You've never been saved. Now watch, stay with me. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. You see? So, you see, if you're saved, the spirit of God dwells in you. But if you're not saved, then you're in the flesh. You see, now watch. Look at it says. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see, he's making a designation about being lost and being saved. Now, stay with me. And then verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So he's saying that if you're in the flesh, you'll not just mind the things of the flesh. That's your life. But you can be set, you can be in Christ or in the spirit, right? Positionally in Christ, but it's also Christ in you, right? Remember Jesus in John chapter 17, that high priestly prayer? He said, Lord, uh, I, I pray that, you know, we abide in him as, as I'm in you and you're in me and they want to be in you and you in me. That's that unity of a Christian. We're in Christ, but Christ is in us, right? In Christ, as we've, we've, we've hit that a hundred times, but also it's Christ in you. But, that, but that's if, notice it says he's clarifying there. And he's saying, but I'm talking about those that are in Christ, but you're minding. So he's clarifying it. He's bringing it up to clarify it. I'm not talking about a lost person. I'm talking about a saved person who's minding, who's after the flesh, who's minding the things of the flesh. See, one is position, the other is experience. If you're in Christ, you're saved. If you're in Adam, you're lost. If you're in Christ, then you're in the spirit. If you're in Adam, then you're in the flesh. You follow me? And you can be in Christ and in the spirit positionally, but experientially you're minding at, you're carnally minded. You're thinking about fleshly things all the time. Because he says that the Christ, if Christ be in you, the body is dead. That means that the body of sin is dead. We have victory over it. Now, it still plays games and you still are carnally minded, but it has been, the, the, man, it's like the drain has been unplugged and all of its power has been drain, drain, pulled down the drain. Amen? Amen? We have, let me read verse 11 and I'm done. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if you are truly saved, and the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The same spirit, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, that moved across the face of the waters. Are you with me? The earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. The spirit moved across those waters and, and was engaged. All the whole, the whole trinity was engaged in creation. That same power of physical creation. And then that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Notice it says Jesus that I raised. If I put it down, I lay it down. I, lay it, I bring it back up again. He's pointing to himself. But then he also says the father did it. But then it also says the spirit did it. That's intentional confusion. Amen. Because God, the Godhead, had, had a hand in it. Amen. But my point is this, and I'm done. The same God, that spirit that moved across the, the early, ancient darkness and void of this physical world and brought creation to pass, the whole universe, the billions and billions and billions and billions and zillions and quadrillions and, of stars and celestial bodies, that God brought into it, that same spirit resides inside you. And not just creation, but resurrection. Physically dead. Jesus' body was, he said, it is finished. Bowed his head. Put his body in the grave. And that same spirit that came and, and broke through the whole system of life and death 
and broke through and raised him from the dead, that same spirit is abiding inside of you. Amen. Makes you look at the, the, those petty issues that we haven't given up yet a little differently. I know they're not petty if we're still hanging on to them a couple years later, but it's a way to look at it. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. We have a new law, my friend, and we have a new Lord. The Lord God Almighty is residing and abiding inside of us. Miss Patty plays, would you take a few moments before we break for some fellowship downstairs? Everybody's invited to stick around and enjoy some fellowship. But before we go down there, would you, would you just settle something in your heart? Would you thank God for his abiding spirit in your life if you're saved tonight? Would you thank him? Would you thank him? Would you thank him? Because there's recognizing it, but then there's thanking him for it. Would you thank him for it? Would you bow your stubborn heart and thank him for it? His spirit abiding inside you. And that spirit of life, that new law that is stronger than the law of sin and death, would you thank him for that? The fact that the new Lord, the Lord God Almighty himself is abiding inside of you, would you thank him for his presence? And would you, not, after you thank him, would you repent of some things, knowing that he's inside of you? You took him along the way to sin. He purchased your body with his own blood. Would you, would you ask him to help you? Would you repent? Would you apologize? Would you say, I'm sorry that I brought you along with some bad things that I've done, some carnal things that I've done? Would you do that tonight? God's given an answer to that. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul, we got an answer for you. His name is Jesus. And he sent his spirit inside of us. Greater is he that is in you than he not only that is in the world, but he that is in your own flesh. Oh, Mr. Sin is still stuck to your physical body. Like carrying around and carrying around a corpse. He's inside of you, and he's stronger than that. He'll set you free from that. Amen. 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 All right, you can look up. Well, thank you so much uh, for uh, listening tonight. I appreciate your patience and your uh, understanding and I really pray that that you'd meditate on these things and when you go back and read it and read it again and read it again and it, it'll just the truths and will just be impacting you you know we're not going to do this uh, I'm not going to go back through and teach on Romans anytime soon amen so it may never come back around but uh, while we're here it's good to just feast on it amen